ready. I am. Great. It is not ready. Cool. Plan the United States of America voting not to be compulsory. The advantages of partnership, political parties, the United States going further apart, looking at partnership, political gridlock. This Jones in 19th, Republicans, Democrats moving further apart in political values. There's no common ground among, uh, amongst Democrats. <laughs> Healthcare, cost, education, the environment, list, the top priorities. Some of these are among the top five leading priorities for Republicans. The partisan, partisan gap is wide for a handful of reasons. Two thirds of Democrats identify climate change as one of the top priorities. Well, just 21% of Republicans and partisan leadership is strong, strong international commitments, clear foreign policy objectives, unraveling the American century. That's true. What's in 19th, America suffering from shortage of usable power, the ability for U.S. presidents to turn wealth power into influences and usable power depends on the ability to win support of our cause action. The three tools by partisanship leaders build a debate by partisanship was normal. During the Cold War, the British Prime Minister reassuring that America's allies' absence of bipartisan support, international commitments to be reversed, and foreign policy making bipartisan a rag. The during the Cold War, President George Bush's success in structuring debate over America's role put international on firm footing. Since the Cold War, President George Bush's support Bill Clinton's division about all found their international support profited by partisan division and compulsory voting focus for forces center uh, keeps uh, compulsory voting forces center focus policy to ensure common ground by partisan but That's Alcorn in 19. And compulsory voting keeps holding on the center parties have to appeal that the majority keeps the temper down against his issues around sexual race and use the motivated voters of people things are passionate about. Very easy. Not most, but yeah, most Australians want action on climate change. And you can see Morrison trying to pull them back. And empirics where the compulsory voting decreases partnership by compelling more moderate non voters. That's Badger. And 17 people who do not follow rapid, who do not have rapid views on polarizing topics and not to vote. They leave us alone voters who elect, elect extreme politicians. It's, it's a vicious cycle. They could dilute their influence on the American population considerably more moderate. Non voters look like glass of bulk. Our on the side that the significant increase in voter participation is above the moderates. But Australia passed in the 1920s. Uh, 95% Australians show up. And U.S. hegemony is sustainable and secure. But America's role requires the continued commitment to democratic institutions to give a structural edge of our revisionist power. That's Kronig in 20, the U.S. faces serious geopolitical challenges. Democracies are built in the United U.S. will likely remain the leading state for foreseeable future. Democracies perform better economic, diplomatic, military function. Democracies excel in great power rivalries. Democracies are consistent structural advantages that have an act for landing at the top. And America's fundamentals look much better. Our democracies will advantage leads to big mistakes. The democracies tend to maintain a stable long term. New strategic decision weaknesses, democracies such as checks and balances are actually among their greatest senses. Dean Putin eliminated domestic obstacles. They also don't consider the weakness. Democracy is the best machine in enormous state wealth, influence, power, prestige, and it is difficult to achieve lasting global mastery without it. Irish scholars not been examine what generates power in the first place. The laws of social science are probabilistic. China and Russia cannot outcompete market economies. They are doing their best to revise or tear it down. The United States has begun by learning the fates of liberal hegemons. The Air Washington must continue to nurture its great source of change that the institutions democracy is master variable and has declined causes for and unstable nuclear alliances, at least a war that's Hayes and 18 nuclear alliances like to be faced by ad hoc coalitions aligning and relining around that end of war nuclear Wars much higher on free the interests ensure that formerly hegemonic posture of the structure of nuclear and the full of American hegemony. First, states and nuclear weapons states may feel driven to obtain larger nuclear weapons configured to fight more than one war to time nuclear weapons with the new normal and unipolarity is key to against the of issues, climate change, pandemics, terrorism, and even if primacy is imperfect, hegemonic transitions for regional wars and conflict. That's Keck. And 14, hegemonic transition periods and they have been the most detailed rise in new global powers and states revisions of the world's rather than possible doing any more inspection in America's power to for anti great power where the unipolar air comes to close possible to great power conflict rise dramatically. The pandemics, terrorism, and global financial crisis, unipolar system, nuclear state for refugee global action on these issues arise of other powers make solving Transnational issues more difficult, and no hedge means cascading prolific extinction. Deterrence doesn't check in pursuit of hedges and double as brands. In 15, U.S. influence and stability are thoroughly in a woman with a robust U.S. foreign presence. Soccer conflict is not something that occurred naturally occurred because the American past race approach dynamics of previously fostered turmoil and limited arms is providing the protection laws other countries to underbuild their militaries and discussion and behavior of allies and adversaries alike, deterring aggression and dissuading other destabilizing behavior. America, uh, if Washington back away from those global, global stability would suffer, the U.S. would be surrounding the most powerful bargaining ship, moving the American past would liberate the destabilizing influence and dominant security competitions might reawaken as a country's dominance. Uh, as with his, themselves historical antagonisms, uh, advantage to civic, civic engagement. Even though democracy in the U.S. might be a given, we are in downward spiral towards more authoritarian tendencies that break down legitimate norms. As I was mentioned, in 2009, the U.S. had ranked here as half as slip to 8 percentage points, fierce attacks on the press and other pillars of democracy. Some scholars point identify a point of origin well before 2016. Middle classes have proven to be filtered based support for every province's rebellions against democratic traditions. And even if Biden were to get elected, we need a well informed engagement to reinvigorate democratic practice, reverse damages as Gilman. And so, teen civic industry is not going to work together without sending pressure so we can teach us of creating better policies, also reinvigorating democratic practice. No choice but to engage in multi-generational policy, individual citizens bring new facts into public life. As watchers, as monitors, the governance citizens can revalue this diverse. Community based organizations and organizations will as problems of democracies suffered as a result. And democracies are not a monolithic system, even if some democracies are problematic. Ones with more accountability and civic engagement are less likely to engage in regional warfare, have armed conflict, etc. That's quite right. And 13 trend runs through studies of fully mature democracy states have the lowest risk of war. The, as democracies uh, to become more inclusive, armed conflict diminishes, democratic policies increase the risks of war programs that foster civic participation and greater oversight, bolster peace, and governments are better able to prevent armed conflict if they have strong institutions. And eroding democratic norms ensures roguish of artificial intelligence for malicious purposes, as Felstein in 1990. 
an undemocratic regime tends to maintain power through a coercion as leader who must oppress or repress must rule on state security forces who problems for repression is labor intensive. This is where the advantages of AI become apparent. Authoritarian leaders use AI to cultivate a digital rep repression. AI <laughs> can cast a much wider net because of this omnipresent they induce teaching's behavior where the origin of democratic institutions is accelerated <laughs> worldwide. And that's the greatest existential risk. That's talks in 16. The humans cannot compete and will be superseded by AI or greatest actions the first machines will do job service intelligence is concerned. Also, uh, the research asking you are banned on AI warfare systems are feasible within years. The stakes are high. Autonomous weapons described as revolution in warfare and compulsory voting spurs a cultural shift in how voting is viewed while driving turnout. This solves better than any alternative that's happened. In 18, the, case, the, the democratic value of voter, voter turnout derives from, derives from a election's moments of universal participation, low turnout, even rates diminish the democratic values of the election. The compulsory voting is just the only instrument that tends to be more effective on making voting more convenient. Increased turnout by only a few points in the realm of new voters. The only measure that appears effective right, requires radical system change. The compulsory voting sends a message all citizens expect to contribute. This encourages citizens to and social political agents and that facilitates deep civic engagement. Elections, universality are both key. That's Chapman. In 18, first compulsory voting is most effective when increasing voter turnout. Compulsory voting rests on the recognition of the unique, the, uh, really unique world that elections play. Greater political equality, greater democratic legitimacy. Voting is not interchangeable with other political influence. Your elections play a distinctive role. This public attitude towards voting is distinct on the object of beauty. The emphasis on voting is not arbitrarily grounded to the role that periodic moments of universal participation play in democratic practices. The extraordinary spectacles and democracy. Ambition towards universal participation in regard against democratic political demo disengagement, defining concrete expectations that citizens will never participate because they never feel confident. Universal participation mitigates this with the recent development and during political identity. The approximating universal participation would require radical reforms of political culture and institutions or universal participation facilitate collective action. Ready? Uh, yes. Let's talk about the civic engagement stuff. So post-plan, the U.S. becomes super democratic. Everyone participates in voting. Everyone knows a lot about our democracy. What does that have to do with AI? Yeah, so the argument is that we need a well. We need uh, so the argument is that we made a uniqueness claim that democracy is shifting is uh, slipping towards authoritarianism now, and bolstering democratic norms is the only way to shift out of that. Our argument is that author once we descend into author intrinsic to authoritarianism is state repression, and once state repression happens, it's not feasible to do it to, through manpower, which means that uh, artif which means that authoritarian regimes are forced to develop artificial intelligence okay. capabilities, which uh, spurs like a new wave of like warfare and stuff. Okay, so I have two questions about that. The first is. Uh, yeah, let, let's start with this. The, the your, your internal link then is like the U.S. would become like China and that it uses like facial recognition, surveillance, blah, 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 random AI stuff. How does that link into your talk, your talks evidence, which is about how AI used as a machine of warfare would be more intelligent yeah, than so human singularity, all of that? So yeah, that's our that's our argument, right? So like once a once AI starts being developed and AI starts being used for repression, it's a slippery slope towards AI uh, being used for other things. Which How is that a slippery slope? Explain to me the internal link there. You can't just say slippery I mean, slope. I mean, I think that is the internal link, right? Once a like uh, the argument is that like AI facial can recognition technology is going to start being used to like it's not, kill it's people. Not, it's it's not just facial re recognition technology, right? There's like lots of different types of AI that can be used in order to like Such uh, as what? For, for example, uh, there's the Fel the Feldstein 19 card talks about how uh, AI bots can monitor communication and uh, pick up dissenting messages, report them to the authorities, etc. There's like yeah, that's not a tool I know, of warfare. I, I know, wait, you're not you're not like listening to the argument. Like sure. the argument is that there's lots of different things that AI can be used for. Once AI starts expanding, it's used for other things such as uh like wor like work. Then uh that's so like that's the first example in the talk 16 okay. part. It talks that's about why like, humans are superseded uh by ai for like things like labor that leads to things like ai okay. being used for things like military that's, yeah, that's fine uh the hedge advantage in this last card the brands 15 evidence can you read me a line uh -huh. that says pursuit is inevitable uh yeah so the argument is so like the argument uh that the brands 15 evidence is making I'm just like curious where that part in the tag came from because i like don't see it in the card yeah, so security competitions reawaken as countries arm themselves with histor uh, more vigorously. Uh, not, it says nothing about U.S. pursuit of hedge. I guess then on the that's same not, line, it, that, it's not it's not about U.S. pursuit of hedge, right? You it's said like pursuit that. inevitable. Yeah, that's not what pursuit inevitable means. Pursuit inevitable means that even <laughs> even if you even if U.S. hedge were to go away, we have made a, a we have made a claim that countries are offensive realist, which means that they will inevitably like some country, which means that even if you make an argument that like. A collapsing hedge leads to multipolarity or whatever. We may, we will we will make an argument that multipolarity is never peaceful because okay, how about unipolarity? Always... What evidence do you have that like China filling in or Russia filling in specifically would be bad? Like that's our argument, right? That transition would cause nuclear war. Why? Like, we say that we say that uh, transition is bad. So if you look to the Keck, so first if you look to the Keck evidence, I, I think for like top level, like Russia or China filling in would be like awful, even if it were to happen. Okay, that's but fine. Second, I, the Keck I mean, evidence. Cross X is over. I'll just okay, send the doc. Sure. Uh, two off case. Case cool. is just top down. Sounds good.
I'm good whenever. Okay. Everyone ready? Interpretation of the Afghan defendant a subset of democracies ought to make voting compulsory. The article A implies a non-specific or generic reading of the word democracy. Walden 20 A used with a singular cannibal dance when the non-specific non or generic B is the violation. They only defend the U.S. will insert a chart of other democracies into the dock. Vote neg. One, semantics that way. A, topicality is a constitutive rule of the activity and a basic effort. They agreed to debate the topic when they came to the tournament. B, it's the only stasis point we know before the round, so it controls the internal link to engagement. There's no way to use ground if debaters aren't prepared to defend it. Two, limit. There are over 70 success accounting for just the EIU index, which is compounded by non-state democracies and broad definitions on limited topics and by obscure apps and kill reciprocal prep which are key to well-researched clash, especially since there's no universal dissent because each country's politics are different. Competing interps, reasonability is arbitrary and invites a reach to the bottom of questionable argumentation. No RBIs. They incentivize all in on theory, invading theory with abusive practices. They're also illogical. You shouldn't win for being T. Counter plan. Text. The United States of America should create a new federal agency to regulate artificial intelligence in cooperation with other relevant federal agencies, specifically in the case of voter suppression. Recognize a reporter's privilege to protect anonymous sources based on common law. The first plank solves the AI scenario. Toes. 20. The best way to regulate AI is through a dedicated federal agency. It's federal interest implement New rules and regulations are staffed by thousands of policymakers and experts. Agencies can move quicker, get deeper into ways, and adjust their policy slides. So the agency who crafts its rules on a narrow sector by sector basis. Policy makers should identify concrete AI use cases. This agency would work closely with other agencies. There will be overlap between its mandate and other regulatory bodies. The second plank solves their populism internal. So free press is vital to preserve U.S. democracy and check Trump. Felton, 18 free press. There's a variety of opinions that differ from the government that fuels democracy, which requires disagreement, which there's an office that the public can consider choosing new leaders. And it's not a bad thing for you, opinion journalists, to see themselves as opposition to Trump. Opposition keeps democracy alive and constitutes one core responsibility for free press. Free press preserves democracy must be long for the expression of alternative points of view for press doesn't depend on being objective because it preserves the multiplicity of opinions. The case. First, I'll do an impact turn one. Decline in hegemony is inevitable and good. COVID, Iraq, financial crisis, Trump, thump, and China's stability oriented primacy advocates are complicit in a dogmatic delusion of bygone U.S. power. Carabell, uh, 713, the 21st century commit anti American century already. Well, it must certainly accelerate 7.8 billion people to advance on multiple nodes of the pro, not one hegemon. U.S. and United States not or need to leave the pandemic with exposed structural fears. It's simply the next iterational process has been unfolding for two decades. The first pillar is military Iraq, Mongol dog, um, occupation, guerrilla war, evoked the Vietnam War, and initial misusing were exponentially magnified by torture and contribution of, the, um, of Geneva, American economic system review comments and the final pillar was democracy of assumption that democracy was the best against democracy in the best path to affluence driving wrote the ability of Americans to say that the progress the process was uniquely able to withstand populism authoritarianism strength and other contexts around this moment a panoply of weakness uh, anti-American this century holds the promise of better terms over the globe China defines rights differently Chinese remains interested in keeping the global peace global parameters has not done Americans well racism persists the United States has to let go of the American country say goodbye to exceptionalism except that it's normal country too empirics go neg most qualified studies disprove hegemonic stability fat wise 17 equally plausible explanations for stability including common enemy and defense war version of not this was due to the U.S. action is unclear. There's less U.S. intervention in Latin America and also less conflict warfare in Africa as low as U.S. interest peace exists where there is intervention as well as where there is not U.S. activities made the situation in the least where such companies failed to bring peace intervention choices have been erratic stability to see even those places where intervention is minimal and hard to make the case that peace primarily due to the low and or more liberal cause. And three counterbalancing a pursuit of hegemony leads to Sino-Russia alliance is, is unsustainable. Porter 19. The U.S. cannot take on multiple fronts. So it would stretch the country to war standard would be unsustainably demanding the problem lies in pursuit of hegemony where the failure to balance commitments to suppress every adversary drive adversary take the crazy cost hostile coalition competition risk creating hostile Eurasian alliance. B, a strong Sino-Russian alliance combined with expanded U.S. military presence ensures joint retaliation that ex escalates to nuclear. Claire 18, American military forces block advances of Chinese and Russian influence attempting to contain China and Russia will provoke counter moves including cyber attacks and economic warfare. Maintaining forces will prove costly immense campaigns for confrontation. Actual war forces are already in a significant contact. One of these things could provoke escalation of nuclear weapons. for terrorism. A, unipolarity is specifically responsible for the globalization of extremism, which makes hedge unsustainable. Ibrahimi 18, unipolarity has generated long conflict of producing mechanisms. Unipolarity Transform terrorism from domestic to global. Unipolar policies in Muslim regions transform the near enemy centric narrative into a far enemy centric ideology. U.S. interventions both engaged in asymmetrical warfare with non state actors that disrupt the Germany through terrorism. B. Terrorism causes global nuclear war collapses, internal and external stability. Our Gallo and Buis, 18. Increasing global destruction was smart. Rising tensions lead to nuclear weapons use consequences will include escalation, present conflicts, and emergence of new ones accompanied by global economic depression and tensions. Could lead to a collapse of the nuclear order. The NPD would be put under severe trial and internal chaos with threatened governments at all levels. So, determined to emerge with consequent attempts to impose restriction on personal freedoms. Five, U.S. military primacy is a hegemonic project which creates vicious cycles of escalation and blowback, fueling great power competition and regional instability. Wertheim, 210. Liberal hedge, uh, hedge methods were always more hegemonical than the liberal um, uh, policymakers. Military superior to quickly become an end unto itself, seeking dominance, pledge U.S. into a downward spiral. Antagonists now um, made primacy more uh, dangerous. Dominance sent to account to generate blowbacks. Al Qaeda declared war. Policymakers were exaggerating the threat posed by rogue states. China is growing into a powerhouse. Russia is asserting itself as a spoiler. 
earlier that a successful primacy primacy was supposed to prevent trend to the dream of ever ending primacy will provoke insecurity and aggression. Six, transforming spurs peaceful retrenchment and is the only way to guarantee restored credibility with allies. McDonald and parent 11. There is little evidence to justify pessimism so not only is great power retrenchment common, it's also effective retrenching states of one militarized disputes of states who can block down and conflicts that will be exploited. Retrenchment is likely to be peaceful and is preferable to non-retrenchment or modest presence can be effective to restoring U.S. credibility. Regional allies appear capable of assuming responsible for the by the U.S. Richard Carvings that production will embolden China's sensible return to be properly prepared for prioritizing goal and shifting burdens will be greater return. Seven, deterrence solves war. Best quantitative and statistical studies proves that nuclear weapons decrease conflict propensity, prefer empirics. The brand's 15 evidence is all moralizing. Cohen, 17, quantitative studies, including experience to moderate the conflict propensity, nuclear repulsion, not lead to conventional conflict. Statistical analysis found probability of states reciprocating disputes increases over time. Nuclear power is 65% less likely. New nuclear states moderate their policy of Iran, North Korea developed nuclear weapons. The historical war has they will not do so for long. Prolif causes interstate conflict. Find no empirical support. Prevent war actions do not cause conflict. Prolif and pressure misclaims are unfalsifiable. Scalds vastly accelerate, exaggerate threats because by the spread of nuclear weapons after 70 years, nuclear weapons have not once led to conflict. Conflict will stop short of nuclear escalation. It's eight. Their brand's evidence does not say pursuit inevitable anywhere. They fundamentally misunderstand what that word means, which means that if they do make a pursuit inevitable argument, I get need to win our responses. Civic engagement. One, compulsory voting discourages voters from civic involvement. Lundell, 12. Ten variables of the word value survey are combined into a single variable of each civic participation variable. has three values that active, inactive, or not a member CV. Compared to voluntary voting, mandate of a negative effect on civic participation. The principle of effect from participation is to engage, but the legal obligation to participate negatively affects other forms of society. And giving CV seems to generate societal justice an antipathetic attitude. Two, a comprehensive view of political science studies shows that CV has no effect on civic duty or participation. Brennan, 14. One, I try to argue that the citizens will increase their knowledge. Evidence is optimistic, but it is worse. Just political science is whether CV tends to be a better informed electorate. The evidence indicates it does not CV has no a noticeable effect on knowledge, interests, or outcomes, no empirical studies. They were able to prevent evidence of increased knowledge. Three, zero internal link to AI. The first piece of evidence about how authoritarian regimes like China use AI to spy on people. Second is about super intelligent AI used for warfare. Even if they were, there's some link between these two. The impact turns outweigh in time frame and probability because of how tenuous it is. Four, one is the evidence proves it's too late. There's too many autocrats. Feldstein, 19, origin democratic institutions has accelerated worldwide. The democracy reports estimates about 2.5 billion people in the countries affected by global autocratization trend. And five, no super intelligence, tech barriers, and diminishing Moore's law means it would happen slowly. Guys, 15. Founders of AI assume discovery would make machines smarter than people that discovered fundamental limitations that show that there will always be diminishing returns to additional parts of the same capital technical hardness for all this emergence of unstoppable super intelligence risk of improving intelligence being grossly exaggerated ought not serve as distinct from existential risks and no impact to US populism. Wayland and Madrid 17 observer worried that populist perspectives would do serious damage to the US's clear separation of power him to soon as Chad's balance into the populist quest. Trump has needed with the extent that does not control polarization and impose the important constraints on his populist designs. Mark the card at on his populist designs. Cross. What? Are you good for cross? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the counter plan. How does it solve the hedge advantage? It the impact turns the hedge on net benefit to it. Uh, how does it solve the hedge advantage? It doesn't. That's the point. <laughs> okay. So the counter plan doesn't solve the hedge advantage. Cool. The counter, um, yeah, because we read impact turns to the hedge advantage. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, let's talk about the hedge advantage then. Um. What is the theory of international relations that the negative forwards? Uh, I guess, I mean, offensive realist, I don't think you know what that means, because that would probably say hedge is bad. You would should probably be defending uh, a liberal model. So I guess we'll go, like, realist. Okay. Okay. Uh, what card warrants that? Um, like, every single card warrants that. What Read me mean? a line. Read me a line. That like, says, we have oh, no card right. that's like, realism is better than liberalism, but you also have no card that says that. So, like, if uh, you want I, to propose okay. an overarching theory of, no, I, think I, I guess... If you want okay. to propose an overarching theory, it's still not true. Like you winning liberalism okay. true uh, doesn't ta about, doesn't okay. take out any of our empirical warrants. I mean, I think it I think it does, but that's fine. Let's talk about this right, empirical arguments. It doesn't let's matter talk about if this theory is true. Wait, if it's Andrew, still Andrew, let's, wrong. Andrew, Andrew, let's talk yeah, about this. Gotcha. Yeah, let's talk about this terrorism stuff. Uh, this Ibrahimi evidence is it just like interventionism causes terror? Uh, it's unipolarity causes terror. Yeah, <laughs> interventionism is one of the warrants. Yes. Okay, what's the other warrant? Um, sort of like policies. What policies cause terrorism? Uh, like, let me think of an example. Like, I like, guess, so like wait, the Muslim ban. Wait, I don't, want, I don't, wait, I don't want, I want you to like give me like an example, like this car. I want you to like read me the warrant in this car that like policies have created terrorism. Uh, unipolar policies in Muslim regions transformed the near enemy centric narrative. Like, yeah, what? that sounds like a claim. Where's the warrant? 
I mean, it's a claim made by an expert, so like that's why we read cards. Wait, so, wait, 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 wait. So we just like believe claims made by experts who like decide that they don't have to give. Dude, warrants, half but... of your evidence is just a bunch of claims. Like, read your brand's evidence. Have you even like looked at it? The point, okay. the reason so... we read evidence is so that they can make claims that are backed by statistical assumptions. For all I know, all of what these statistical words... uh, Andrew, Andrew, what statistical assumptions? Does this yes. Card okay, do? I was about to get to that. For all we know, all, every single word in here has like a hyperlink in the actual article to some study that backs it up. We don't know, which is wait, why. Okay. We read evidence. Wait, you don't know what your own card says? What? No, I don't know if it has a hyperlink to some hyper specific study about okay, so, terrorism. So, so you don't know what studies your card say? Okay, that's fine. Do you uh, know what study your brand's 15 evidence? Okay. That's, that's such an unreasonable okay, burden. Let's, let's talk about uh, this Wertheim in 210 card. Uh, what is the. Wait, like, what What do you mean? What, what does like hegemonic project mean? Uh, that, like, that seems pretty self-explanatory. You said hedge yeah. good. We say that's a sort of like political project, which it, it's sort of like it goes broader than just pursuing the unipolarity. It causes a bunch of things like blowback, escalation, etc. Okay. Oh, what's the impact to blowback? Um, terrorism, I guess. That's like one of the things. Okay, terrorism. Instability. Uh, four minutes. Southlake, like, could you mute yourself? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Was two minutes used. Um, I'll send it. The order is T, the counter plan, and then case. Okay, I'm ready whenever everyone else is. Yeah, I'm just Same. Yeah, 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 I'm sending it right now. Okay. It is sent. I accidentally called it Loyola Octas, whatever. D kind of case. Um, pulling it up. Yeah, I'm ready. 
kind of interpretation. I can specify country A is single. That's memory Webster uses functional word for single nouns, and both readings are correct. That can be dictionary A can be used to mean anything or everything you're referring to. Specific instances of juniors also means that me. That's simply an old ten generic savings card. Little to be judged through the first few people just uh, uh, dispute that mosquitoes carry west. Not the only one percent are actually carriers. That empirically the prevalence level is sufficient to judge generic savings true is significantly lower. And debate solves arbitrary linguistic intuitions determine the best, uh, best predictable answer based on factors like class and limits. Semantics are flown out of single sufficient predictable interpretation topic. Then division grounds more important. Standards one is class allows us to go in depth in particular parts of literature. Allows more nuanced space differentiation. Different second is after ground advantage applies to all democracies because different ones have different geopolitical situations. Picks are comparatively worse. Eight point four says one year restart moving the one is creating a thirteen seven times Q. B point next have generics like politics and eighty contest that don't have any versus picks. Third functional is check of Bible. Afternoon strong uniqueness and democratic backslide in the voter time is very much like no way far unfeasible. Fourth is overloaded to make whole is the only topical average is devastating versus hyper simple next. Fifth is the reasonability because you got no key voice substance card out that kind of fun. Permutation with we're not going we're not we're not going to go for the civic engagement kind of plan. They conceded in cross-ex it doesn't solve the uh they conceded in cross-ex doesn't solve the hedge advantage it means any new two in our spin. I get new two our responses to uh the case. Partnership, partisanship destroys international commitments, uh, destroying privacy abroad. This wrecks global cooperation of warming trade and terrorism while locking in pre regional wars, playing reverse that, forcing a more, more moderate voting demographic. And primacy solves all your approximate impacts. Owen 11 indicates that uh, U.S. hegemony is created most peaceful cooperative time period. And, uh, our evidence indicates that U.S. hegemony is created most peaceful uh, time period time period in history, which was just a straight which is uh, which was a uh, straight concede coming out of the uh, two uh, coming out coming out of the one and see the lima line to the head the lima line to the head stuff one our top level to the head stuff one. It's not enough for them to win primacy. It's bad in the abstract. They've offered our alternative vision of the international order. Comparatively better, which they just haven't done. Second, even if idealistically there's an alternative international order that's better, hegemonic transitions to regional wars. That's the Keck 14 evidence. Third, thousands of years of empirics indicate that U.S. primacy fosters an unprecedented amount of global cooperation, economic competitiveness, and international peace, which is our chronic evidence. Even even if they even if they win, there are instances of U.S. hegemony that are that that have caused that have caused war. That isn't sufficient to win the overall. That isn't sufficient to disprove the overall trend that U.S. hegemony has in fact spurred uh, has in fact spurred peace uh, spurred peace. The U.S. and and fourth, the U.S. will try to defend it and I believe decline causes war. It's a question of what kind of hegemony we want. That's Beckley. M15 entanglement is rare. The great powers decay their terms of security. Allies help the avoid overextension rarity and entanglement is just deep engagement may facilitate ML to retain the most egregious or breach of some from an entanglement from the pension that just define national interests and to disengage from at least US ever intervening recklessly leaving without partners. Those intervening go right. That no and US hedges is stable. Neck authors are wrong. Doesn't cause overstretch or free writing. That's Norloff. And 18. That's the criticism of mischaracterizing America's eleven the hegemonic prize and mix of public and private good free writing the possible that hegemon uses dominance externalized negative externalities. US is capable of reversing decline by using different levels of power with the grounds of clinics that US will have pre-competition military Economically, that the U.S. is one of the world's, world's most formidable military powers, brought by some uh, metrics which demonstrating the U.S. remains the leading state. Kind of the U.S. is the, not for any interesting degree, but uh, fragile one. You also conceded the chronic evidence that talks about why revisionist powers like China or Russia are unable to compete with democracy, are unable to compete with democracies, which means that no, uh, unable to compete with democracies, which means this card, uh, which means that which means that any other order would fail. They say the Fed was evidence. One point is that there's no warrants in the card. Seriously, read this evidence after the round. It's terrible. The, uh, read this evidence after the round. It's terrible. They have not cited this. They, it's just a series of claims that does. Uh, Without a warrant as to how, uh, without a warrant as to why it's true, there yeah, it just cites a bunch of examples like Latin American Africa, Latin American uh, Latin American Africa, but it doesn't disprove the overall trend that we have trends that we give that show that over the past years, U.S. Germany has fostered peace. You say. Uh, the hedge causes war. The U.S. has constrained from endless temptations. Cold War. Uh, are actually, yeah, we already answered that. That was like the conceded evidence. Their Porter evidence. They haven't highlighted their words China or Russia. In the, they haven't. They haven't even highlighted the words China or Russia in this evidence. Third, second, the evidence says the problem is Chinese revisionism, which is a strong unipolar but flagging hegemony. Exactly. It's third, their internal internal is about resource trade off. That's inevitable. If we win our arguments about hedge, that's that's inevitable. It's better to make hegemony more robust to increase. It's, it's better to make hegemony more robust to increase resources. Unipolarity is self reinforcing. Uh, actually, really. Uh, the the second advantage will concede. Uh, we'll concede that we, we we concede there's no internal links to AI. We'll concede there's no internal links to AI and uh, no uh, impacts to superintelligence. Means there's uh, no net no net benefit. Uh, yeah, they haven't proposed a concrete alternative to uh, the IO transition wars would cause extinction. Even so, okay. head solves all their impacts. Um, four minutes of prep. What was the what were the responses to the Porter evidence? I got you. You didn't highlight the words China and Russia. What was after that? Uh, yeah, the evidence says the problem is Chinese revisionism, which is solved by a strong unipole, which is our okay. chronic evidence. But yeah, like getting rid of hegemony exacerbates it.
uh, one new card. Is it fine if I don't send it? Because it was already in the one and C doc. So if you didn't change the one and C doc, um, it's the eighth card under the contention one, I think. Is everyone cool with that? Yeah, that's fine. I don't yeah. Know. Can you repeat your order, Andrew? Uh, can I plan case? Cool. Kick the can of plan. It was conditional perms or test of competition. Not going for it. Uh, case. At the top, extend the parent and McDonald's evidence. They did not call this card out by name or imply any sort of embedded clash against this card whatsoever in the 1AR, which means that any 2AR response to this will necessarily be new. You should hold the line. Any 1AR response, uh, any 2AR response, you need to be able to draw a specific line from the 1AR into the 2AR to be able to justify. Otherwise, it's entirely new and you should strike it from your flow. The parent and McDonald's 11 evidence does statistical studies to show that we do have a sort of overarching trend or a better model of international relations where by retrenchment is able to cause a period of peace. Retrenchment has historically been good uh, for the world, his hegemonic uh, hegemonic instability or hegemonic decline instability theories are empirically false, which is proven by all of the studies they uh, by all of the studies they've conducted. Uh yeah, by, by all of the studies they've conducted. Yeah, it's just like pure statistics are evidence. Even if you don't see any like numbers highlighted, that's because this is literally from a study. You can read the article title and all of those things that we do have highlighted are simply claims based off the statistics that the uh, authors already did. The They have no warrant whatsoever as to why unipolarity is uniquely key. Individual countries are able to solve back for all of the impact they have, they have isolated, all of their unipolarity key evidence, uh, like their Keck evidence, which is the only possible thing they could cross apply here, uh, simply says that things like warming and, and individual countries like pen, have, have economic issues and pandemics, etc. All of those things are already being handled by individual countries, i.e. China is cutting down on warming much better than the U.S. ever uh, than, than the U.S. ever has. And individual countries are dealing with COVID much better than the U.S. has as well. It proves that a strong unipolar center is no longer necessary to have these sort of individual multipolar, uh, anti individual multipolar uh, problem-solving capabilities. The allies, uh, the parent and McDonald's evidence also indicates that allies are able to solve back for all of their impacts because all of our allies have by now already grown nearly as strong as the United States. They're able to fill in and solve back for all of these sort of interventions and hotspots that the U.S. is currently taking the role of, which none of their evidence takes into account. You should look through all of their Keck evidence for a line where they say that allies are not sufficient because it simply doesn't exist. Retrenchment would not embolden China is another claim made by the Parent and McDonald's evidence. They do statistical studies to show that even though China is revisionist, they're not going to become more revisionist just because we sort of uh, sort of, just because we sort of retrench, which means that it's marginal defense at best. Next, I'll extend the Carabelle evidence, which was the first piece of evidence in the one to see. Decline is structurally inevitable. Things like COVID and Trumpism have made it impossible to salvage the United States. They're going to go for, yes, we solved that, except our evidence, our point is that you, you fundamentally do not, even if we vote out Trump and manage to replace him with someone better, we would never be able to solve that sort of anti-democratic and anti-hegemonic tie that has been created by the uh, by, by, by the area of Trump and also all of these things that reduce U.S. credibility, like our uh, terrible handling of COVID, which means that U.S. unipolarity US unipolarity will never be able to solve, even if they win that unipolarity is the only good thing and they answer apparent and McDonald's evidence, which says multipolarity good, we can still win that China will fill in and cause a better unipolar world because our uh, Carabelle evidence indicates that China is peace oriented and would would want to be able to uh, cause a better uh, cause a better world order. Um, ba -ba -bum. Oh yeah, last last thing I'll extend on this sort of overview level is they've straight dropped the Cohen evidence, which says that proliferation is good. I will concede from the money see that the F is able to solve back for proliferation because the U.S. Uh, because U.S. retrenchment would cause um uh, would cause like the sort of U.S. nuclear umbrella to disappear, so different people would want to proliferate. But they've dropped the Cohen evidence, which runs a bunch of statistical studies. Once again, it's all stats and empirics that proves that deterrence is able to solve back for those wars, even if places like North Korea and Iran were, were to proliferate, they would either get rid of their nukes immediately, which ensures peace, or they would simply deter each other, which ensures peace as well, which is the only way to prevent war, the line by line. At the top, they say primacy solves all impacts. They've conceded the FETWISE, or they didn't concede it, except their evidence, their response just makes no sense. The FETWISE evidence says that there is no evidence of a hegemonic peace theory. They have not extended a single study. The FETWISE evidence, maybe it doesn't make sense when you read it, because the, uh, because once again, it's the exact same thing. It is literally a bunch of evidence from a study. We have just simply highlighted the conclusions of those studies, which means that it's still empirically backed, except even if we didn't highlight the numbers specifically, that doesn't mean it's no longer empirically valid. Next, they said we had need to re we need to propose a better alternative model that was already talked about. The Keck 
evidence they say it says transition bad except you should prefer the parent at mcdonald evidence because it's actually based off of empirics instead of abstract moralizing like there when it uh, when i see keck evidence the chronic evidence was answered it was answered by the careable evidence which says that all of these theories of democratic peace aren't actually as true as they think they are which means autocracies are still not better at able and, and able to fill in they said instances individual instances of uh, hegemony being bad aren't enough and we need to prove an overall trend yes instances are enough if we prove that hegemony is able to cause extinction in any one way like uh, by preventing proliferation that is independently enough for us to win that you should vote negative for a uh, risk of offense because they've conceded 100 percent of some impact scenario yes uh, except we do propose that overall trend which was the parent and mcdonald's evidence extended above the beckley evidence as pursuit of hegemony is inevitable they've conceded i get you to win our response to this from the one and see so pursuit isn't inevitable it's a choice that's glazer 18 um the u.s remains extraordinarily insulated oh the u.s uh my Words kind of bugging out. The U.S. remains extraordinarily insulated. Something unlikely to change with a more restrained grand strategy. Commentators worry about decline associated with a sense of failure. It's hard to see how a reduction in America's global world equates to degradation. Primacy system seem too much about American authorship to data disorder. The risk of our extension are very rarely the U.S. can choose to husband its still unmatched power and far where foreign policy excesses where it can hasten its own decline. Neither path is imposed. Remains a choice. Also on the Beckley on the Beckley evidence, you should reject evidence written by former debaters. Beckley was the CEDA champion, which means that he has a vested interest in promoting certain views and debate. The Norloff evidence says hegemony is sustainable. It doesn't take into account any recent evidence, like our careable evidence actually takes into account covid trump etc all of these are hilariously recent or their norloff evidence is just generically like hegemony might be good but we've already answered that above the, uh, the chronic evidence was answered above the fet waste evidence uh, already extended uh, I'll go for the counterbalancing stuff. Their only response was that Porter doesn't say China or Russia. It says a Eurasian alliance. What the fuck else could that mean? So obviously we do want some sort of China-Russia counterbalancing scenario, which turns and outweighs the affirmative. It causes global war of China and Russia because if we continue to try to pursue hegemony, China and Russia would team up against us, which would uh, inflame tensions. It would it would cause a revisionist China, even though the status quo uh, would not, which means that only the F is able to lead to that sort of uh, uh, unstable multipolar order that they have claimed we do. Um, yeah, and the Chinese revisionism stuff we already answered above. Two minutes, starting now. Uh, it's just going to be case. Okay, I'm ready whenever. Cool. Uh, is anybody not ready? Great. 
Partnership destroys international commitments, destroying primacy abroad. This wrecks global cooperation and warming trade and terrorism while locking in regional wars plan reverses that forcing more, forcing a more moderate voting demographic. There was a couple impacts that were coming out. There was a couple impacts that were just straight conceded coming off the hedge pace. The first was a warming the first was a warming impact. They just did not the, the entire two the entire two and R was just a bunch of nuke war it was just a bunch of war impacts without any weighing without any weighing them, but they conceded that part of, they they conceded that cooperate they conceded that a loss of hedge decks cooperation on warming, which is a cooperation on warming, which is key to solve, which means that if I win warming out if I win that warming outweighs the nuclear war, you vote, you vote affirmative because there was not a sentence of weighing us why war outweighs in the, from the uh, coming for coming from the two and R, which means anything else is just is just intervention. If warming ter- warming turns nuclear war. What is the magnitude? Warming affects every single per- warming affects every single person on the planet. Warming affects every single person on the planet. After uh, uh, a bunch of studies, a bunch of studies indicate that war- a bunch of studies indicate that it's coming it's coming soon and will be ir- irreversible. Which means that after a certain point, people will not be able to exist in the world due to things like uh, ice caps uh, ice caps melting and water overwhelming uh, why, 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 like people uh, the ice caps melting and uh, sea level sea level sea levels going up. Which means that insofar as that insofar as that happened, they have not isolated a terminal impact as to they have not isolated a terminal impact to you no know, they have not isolated a terminal impact to war whether that be a, whether, whether that be extinction or a certain a certain amount of deaths look back at your flow they have not isolated they have not isolated what the impact of war actually is which means you prefer our mag- you prefer our magnitude weighing second is t- second is t- second time frame you should prioritize the scope you should you should prioritize the time frame of sol- time frame of solvency so, we are at the brink of solving we are at the brink of solving for warming we are at the brink of solving for warming now and continue proper com- co- continue cooperation is necessary in order to keep it in order to continue cooperation necessary in order to keep it going which means loss of that destroys destroys international co- destroys international cooperation and prevents us from being able to which being able to solve which outweighs their arguments that which outweighs their arguments on time frame you should live to fight you should live to fight another day obviously things like war and things like things like war and stuff are, are, are obviously are things like war are, so, are stuff that we can we can always solve in the future but warming is irreversible warming is irreversible after uh, warming and warming warming is irreversible and it's happening now which means that you should prioritize solving it now prioritize solving it now especially since they haven't isolated a warrant as to why war is why, why war is existential the last argument i'm going for the last war is ex, existential warming also turn uh, yeah the, the, yeah so the, the last argument i'm going the last argument i'm going for is this uh is this is the transit is the transition wars argument they had the only answer to this keck evidence was the was the extension of the mcdonald and parent evidence and just saying that i didn't i uh, was just it was the extension of the mcdonald and parent evidence just saying i didn't respond to it but i definitely did respond i definitely did respond to it they have not defended a feasible alternative throughout this entire debate they kind of were wishy-washy on whether or not they defend Chinese autocracy or multipolarity or whatever but they haven't isolated a single reason or they haven't isolated a, a one reason as to what solves transition wars yes they I yes they the McDonald parent evidence says that yes the McDonald parent evidence says that other countries can shoulder US responsibilities but they can see to the warrants and the CAC evidence that talk about why transition periods specifically have caused war in the first place which means there are more which means that uh none of their impacts happen because war happens before the transition can even occur which was just a conceded argument good debate good debate